look at us in the booth. <laughs> Joe Trapel, Martin Potter, and what a surprise, Joel. Yes, thank you for having me. Joel yeah. Parkinson, 2012 world champ, retired last season, and I knew you weren't going to be gone long. <laughs> so good to have you in the booth, yeah. my friend. What brings you to the West? Um, I'm just uh, here, just uh, hanging out. I've got just hanging with the Billabong guys, staying here and surf, and um, I guess doing my new job as a Billabong <laughs> ambassador and still being a part of it. Oh, my Unreal. goodness. So you were just in Tasmania. Yes. With Aki. Yeah, here we go. First wave okay. up and riding. Italo. Let's, let's get back into it. Italo Ferreira taking on John John Florence for a spot in the semifinals. And Parco joining us for the call here today. Italo trying to fight through this little inside, little shove it, spins that around. Does a mind riding switch. And he'll come in into the rocks. What a talented surfer trying to put pressure on John John early. Florence still world number one, and Italo coming off a very impressive showing at the box in his first strike, getting that 8-1-7 early. Potts, what'd you like out of the, about the right-hander here? Yeah, well, that first turn, I mean, he's been doing so much damage with that backhand attack, Joe. Uh, rapid fire, um, you know, two solid moves out here going to get you good scores, and Ilo Ferreira's just been on fire. I mean, the, the, the ability to go out of the box yesterday and produce something amazing, and then here this morning on, on fire as well. This afternoon in quarterfinal action, just lighting it up. And that's what you've got to do against John. Put the pressure on straight away. Two turn combo. Vertical upside down attack there from Italo Ferreira, Joel. This guy's on fire. Yeah, wow, that was impressive. Two turns. I mean, love how fast he fits him in. Oh, I just, amazing. Such an amazing surfer. So quick and then gets a little skateboard influence there. Remember when he won Karamas last year? He actually rode a wave switch on the way in. I think he got a 2.3 for it or something. <laughs> it was just such a cool skill set you don't yeah. see every day. Coming into this event with uh, some room to move on the Jeep leaderboard. We just lost Kanoa Garashi to Ryan Callanan earlier today. So Italo could cover some ground trying to catch up to this man, Florence. So if he takes out John, he'll be looking good to maybe get close to wearing yellow again. Park, I want to get your take on, on the year so far. We've had a few events, you know, coming off a... Uh, uh, an event where we had Kanoa win. That was kind of cool to see someone win their very first CT. John back winning Bells and also Itala winning the season over. It's got a totally different feel to it this year. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's been amazing to watch. I thought the, the talent that is there on tour is incredible. The depth is really impressive at the moment, I think. Uh, I think these two guys right here in this heat, in particular, to me, are doing the best surfing so far this year. Um, this is like a world title heat. It's an early, it's a big call to say early, but these are the heats, the big heats where you look back and go, if I could have stopped John or you could have stopped Italo later in the year, and these are the, the moments you get to stop them in a quarter and not let them get, you know, the 8,000 or the 10,000 points later during the event. So these are huge, huge heats, this one. Yeah, it's so cool. I love getting your insight, Joel, because especially with Italo and John being event winners this year, meeting this early at a quarter final matchup. Uh, is really massive. Florence obviously with a huge reputation on this wave and Italo trying to win here for the first time. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you just got to go back a few years on the, the performance that John put on and we saw a little bit of that this morning, didn't we? Uh, but conditions, as they deteriorate, it's going to kind of play for me into Italo's hands with that fast twitch that he's got going. I mean, those two turn combo to kick things off and already a big score on the board, Joe. 7-3-3 early for Italo, putting pressure on John Florence who got past Sebastian Zietz in a very close battle that they had earlier today on the main break. Parker, I remember when you had the jersey on here at main break, you're always looking to the other side of the bay to see what the box <laughs> was doing. I'll get your take on what happened yesterday in just a moment because Italo's firing once again. There's that smooth transition but falls on the second maneuver but already trying to back up that second ride really quickly. What was your take on yesterday's action? Because that was pretty incredible to see the conditions we got. That was, uh, that was one for the books. Like that's a, that, that, those days, they don't get those forecasts. I mean, they, they probably have that once or twice a year, maybe, maybe once. Mm. And, and to get it during an event on a round three with all the best guys still in the event was really special. I mean, I was traveling on flights yesterday, so I was in and out of, and I was just, Every time I had reception, I was just glued to my, <laughs> to my phone. Um, and I, I was lucky enough, I got to see Jack um, and a few of the other heats. I missed a couple really good ones too during, during being in the air, but uh, it was awesome. I mean, that was probably 
some of the first time I actually went, geez, I wish I was still surfing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was hoping you were going to say uh, that. Yeah, I think. Here we go, John, answering back. Florence off the bottom, setting up that amazing hook. Big start, driving that whole rail into the open face. Just like you'd expect, flowing over the white water. And there's that wrap throw the inside. Amazing variety, bearing every section with so much power. Big answer to Italo Potts. Yeah, massive answer. I think he's going to better Italo's score for sure. I mean, just those first two turns, you know, just precision done with a lot of speed and power. Super clean as well. You know, it's a, it's a hard wave to keep the rail clean out here, Joel. And for him, for John to uh, produce those two turns was amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, probably the hardest wave to keep your rails clean. I mean, you got bells can be tricky. It's not, not it's a little easier for sure, bells, to keep your rails clean. j is probably the easiest out of all the, the right point breaks and right handers we have. But this wave has just got so many moguls in it all the time. So it's really hard to find. As you can see, that was clean and this one gets a bit gaggy, but it's still oh, really good. Yeah. Man, I don't think it matters to him. He's that good on, on these waves. <laughs> he can just push through any bump and lump. And what a start for Florence. We'll get another angle on the, the opening maneuver there, Pons. Yeah, nice opening turn. And it kind of just set him up nicely, didn't it? Two solid maneuvers and a little foam climb. So Italo Ferreira 3.3. I think it's going to be a little bit higher, I think. Um, just with the fact that he, he used the open face nicely. I love the tail around. release here. Yeah. The tail release is just what makes it and puts him in a really good position for the next turn. I like the body, the body position and then that little kick at the end of it. He doesn't, he doesn't quit on those turns, does he? He just brings it all the way back around and then deals with what's coming next. I don't think he quits ever. Yeah. He's in my, like, that, that was just oh. so well driven through. His carves look so different. We were talking about that earlier today, Joel, on how different his technique is compared to what you're used to, especially when he's on the rookie on tour. Everyone was going, where's his upper body going? It's not that traditional style that a lot of people were used to when he first qualified. Yeah, well, I mean, when I see a carve, too, I, I don't often look too much into the top of the body. I'm always more hips, feet, and, and board movement um, on, a, on a carve, you know. Everyone places their arms in, in a different position on a yeah. carve. You know, everyone's completely different in that. John's is just pretty unique, definitely. But if you look through what the board's doing, the feet and the, the hips do, I always find that the, the telling tale of it's a good carve or a bad carve. Well, Joel, uh, you've had some special memories with John in the jersey at a lot of different venues around the world. Uh, you've beaten him at Tahiti in the past, 2012. You also had your perfect heat against him at Karamas, <laughs> which is really special as well. Uh, what's it like in the water with John? How, what's he like as a competitor? And, and obviously, you've been able to bring out your best against him in the past. Um, he's such a better competitor nowadays than when he first got on tour. He was a he was, I wouldn't say easy to beat, but he was easier to beat, <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. I mean, nowadays he's, he's so polished and he's, he's ironed out so many creases in his uh, attack and, man, he doesn't, look, look he's answered straight back, back to Italo 7-3, dropped an 8-5 and now he's straight back on the, I guess, on the foot and the power. Yeah. It was actually just balancing the idea, Potts, of not just being the guy that's called the best surfer in the world by your peers, uh, but also being the best competitor as well. And we see that decision-making, putting himself on the best waves. His boards are, are so dialed, and it looks incredible. What a big answer in the 8.5. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what Joel was saying was, you know, when he came a few years ago, obviously, uh, before the world title years, it's more of a free surfer coming into the competitive arena. So... There was a few holes in his game, but since then he's fixed that up for sure. Pretty cool to see his role in this one. And I love the just the intensity that you just brought to this heat, Joel. Like realizing this is a massive one for the whole world title picture. You know, even at just stop number four of the season with two throwaways. I mean, you had all those years before your world title run where you had time to maybe look back at one or two results to see what could have gone wrong or what you could have changed to, to have been a world champ before 2012. Yeah, definitely. And, and sometimes it's not putting enough emphasis to, and energy into some of your earlier events through crucial heats, you know. If I could have stopped Mick, um, maybe in a in a quarter or at, uh, on the Gold Coast, or you could have stopped someone else, or probably could have stopped Kelly numerous times, I think. <laughs> but uh, he, uh, he stole definitely quite a few of our world yeah. titles. Uh, yeah. Um, due, to, due to his surfing ability, yeah, too. Yeah, right? pretty amazing. <laughs> Didn't amazing. just steal it, but he won the right? uh, can, What's your take on Kelly this year? 47 uh, Karamas. He looked like he found some magic once again. <laughs> you know what? 
Um, I've been having an argument with Oki <laughs> for a few days. We've been travelling together. And at the start of the season, you know, Kelly, I'm sure he'd say he did, wasn't great. He didn't look great. I was like, oh, it's going to be a tough and long year. And then um, Oki the other day was like, um, I'm going to, if I'm going to, if I had to pick a world champ, I'm going to pick Kelly. And I was like, man, really? Like, and then right after it, I, I was like, definitely he's improving. Like, I was like, he's, you know, Kelly of old is there. And, and then sure enough, he went out and surfed that heat the other day and he dropped those couple of big scores and he looked amazing. Yeah. And I was like, and I got the, I told you so, Joe. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, okay. He, he uh, definitely surfed like a world champion right yeah, there. Yeah. Oh, really incredible. Enjoying our time with Parko in the booth, 2140 to go. Let's catch up with Lakey Peterson with Rosie Hodge. Lakey, Ronnie Blakey called that a monumental win. Yourself and Steph, you guys had the world title race last year. You guys are seven to zero in matchups for yourself. There was only one way to do it, and that was that you absolutely went mad out there. Is it, how satisfying was that win? Really satisfying. Um, I just, yeah, obviously the world title was Steph last year, and um, and she's always beat me in heats. Like every final we had last year, she won, and I don't know. I just, I was so going into that heat just now. I was like, I'm not, I'm done, <laughs> I'm done losing to her. And um, obviously she's a phenomenal surfer, and I think this year she's been surfing better than ever. So I was like, okay, well. Even after my first wave, my, my nine, my first nine, I was like, I still scared that she could so easily get an eight, five or whatever she needed right away. So um, yeah, that one felt really good. I think it's just good for my confidence and um, I always love competing against her. I think she brings the best out in me and um, yeah, I'm stoked. <laughs> The first nine was exceptional. The second, however, was amazing. Steph put up her arm to shield herself from the spray, and then the finishing maneuver on that wave took everything. It was so impressive. Um, yeah, I kind of saw Steph like right where I was going to do a turn, and I was like, oh, this is going to look, I don't know. I, I was sort of like, okay, well, I'm doing a turn, whether you like it or not. <laughs> um, and then the end section, Mike just kept telling me, like, you got to hit the end section, and I don't know, it, it was pretty death defying, but I also was, I was thinking of my brother because he's, um, he's actually in the military right now in training and he always tells me like, you gotta just slam sections and I, so that one was for my brother because uh, yeah, he told me to do it, so I did it. <laughs> you definitely made him proud and how are you gonna replicate those performances going forward? Um, I don't know, I think just, I think there's a lot of confidence to be carried from heats like that and just kind of getting back in my groove and feeling like, okay, I've, you know, I've put together a couple really nice heats and um, I'm really happy to be doing well here at Margaret's. I haven't had the best results here in the past. So, yeah, I think just take the confidence and keep enjoying it and having fun. I think the moment you get too much pressure and too much outside noise, things can go downhill. So I'm just going to keep having fun and uh, looking forward to tomorrow. Excellent surfing. We'll see you in those semifinals, Lakey. Thank you, Rosie. Lakey Peterson fired up. One of the better combined heat totals of the season. It's so rare to break into the excellent range, let alone a near perfect 10, a 9-8 to start against Steph to get her first win ever against the seven-time world champ. As we continue on with Florence, already threw down an incredible ride right before this. He's got a ton of speed, big blow tail, lays back and won't get credit for it just because of the rocks there. But right before that, during the interview with Lakey, he threw down a 6-7-7 to put more pressure on Italo Ferreira and a totally different approach than what he went for on his big eight-point ride to start pots. Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, he's got to get those scores on the board, back those good scores up, and yeah, we see so many times where someone drops a massive score and then struggles to, uh, to back it up. So especially against someone like Italo, you want to apply the pressure. You want to make him feel like he's got to go above and beyond, but I like the fact John's uh, rolling the dice under the priority of Italo Ferreira as well. Big blow tail on that first maneuver how smooth that board is in transition and you're talking about how difficult it is to keep the rail clean i mean that was pretty flawless surfing there on a small wave gel yeah i mean that was this that was crazy air yeah. that was like the way you always thought he was going to make it i mean that was a so 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 turn. this turn's amazing for a really average section the way he got so much tweak out of that yeah, I, yeah. I love that turn like i mean most guys would flick off right there and or wouldn't <laughs> really push it but he made a a really average section and turned into such a nice turn. Really impressed with his form and just variety he's given us in a short period of time. His third wave won't change anything. A throwaway 483. And so Italo still needs a 795 with priority out the back with waves on the way. Italo trying to pick the right one, which has been challenging at basically every heat at the main break. 
John on his way back out. He'll hold his position. Ferreira surfing out of his skin at the box yesterday. Beat a previous event champ in Michelle Perez first thing in the morning. So he's finding that winning formula quickly. Last year, he, it was crazy when he got his first win at Bells over Mick Fanning in that final. And then went on to three wins last season. To start off with a win at the start, it, you realized he's he's figured out something pretty special in a short period of time, Potts. Yeah, no, he has. Uh, you know, he. I think just from the get-go, he's, he's opening here on tour. He kind of showed those signs of something special. You know, even in those waves where everyone was maybe going to doubt his performances. Is that little air from John? Uh, nice little rotation there. Just a good little backup. Um, I like the fact he's staying busy. He's doing an Italo on Italo, you know, and that's what Italo does. Once he gets that first wave, he kind of freestyles. Now he's up again. Blitz is the first section. Straight up Furt again. Oh, wow. This with is a... Finn's flying free. Continues to wrap away and shuts it down. Wow. Here we go. Italo answering back, too. Hack to float for the goofy foot. Jams it. <laughs> Number one and three in the world. Just exchanging blows here at the main break of Marga River. It seems like Florence is just finding such a cool rhythm. Joel underneath priority or even with it. But Italo's got his brand of surfing and it's fair. Fair answers back right now. Definitely. I mean, as I said before, I personally think these are the two best surfers in the world right now. And John may just have an edge right now. And this this oh. second turn here is just incredible. Look at the release he got there. That was so well done. I mean, is this the best wave of the heat? I'm probably going to have to say it is, huh? Yeah, I, I think so, 100%. And Italo's probably got the second best wave of the heat now, too, so... I mean, that turn there, just to kick it off, you know, you don't need the biggest wave out here, do you? I mean, you've got to get those ones that just hit the reef nicely. Yeah, it's all about the face. Yeah. It's all about the clean face, and that was just perfect uh, waves chill action right there. Wow. Unbelievable amount of variety from John Florence, the 2017 Margaret River Pro champ. What about Itzela here, Potts? Yeah, beautiful tight snap in the pocket, up and over the lip. I mean, just the tram, you know, just the time taken. He fits so much in in a short space. Rapid fire, that, that fast twitch muscle fibers or whatever he's got going on. It's just amazing. Nice little snap and just gets a little bit of drift there. And what it does, it just puts him in that perfect spot to go up and over the lip. The judges are loving the floaters at the moment. Instead of going down and around, that's a transition move that, that, that's scoring good points these days. And then to fit that last turn in there nice and vertical, I think that's maybe what the, the goofy footers have here at main, main break, Joel, is to get that board nice and vertical. Yeah, definitely. And especially especially when they hold the, the, the board high and the lip, you know, it always looks so much exciting from where the judges' perspective, because where the judges judge from here is so far what yeah. the where the cameras are it's completely different and in a lot of the times that's why i think people you know you'll see that oh, so and so should have won this heat or they should have won this heat but if you were sitting from where the judges would sit you'd have a completely probably different view on, yeah. a, on a heat so i mean there's plenty of i mean i'm, I'm probably now the worst armchair critic in the world <laughs> because i can be but i don't i'm not sitting in a judge's booth anymore uh, and i'm not worried about what the score is. Well, yeah. you're breaking down <laughs> such a big point. Angles are everything. Yeah, yeah. Angles yeah. in surfing are everything. Yeah. Yeah. How much bigger he... a wave looks from behind? Like the box ones yesterday, and then look, you know, like, <laughs> looks, one looks 25 foot, one looks six foot from a different angle, yeah. Oh, it's so true. From this, down the beach, you can think someone really killed a section in front on you. Like, oh, that was really flat. And, that, yeah, and yeah. that's oftentimes when we want to go back to a judge's angle to see what they're actually looking at and how they're scoring. Well, big numbers coming through. Like you thought, Parco, the best wave of the heat just went down. John Florence, 9-2-3 at an 8.5 as he's out in front of Italo. Ferreira chasing a 9-7 to make a comeback in this first quarterfinal. Be right back. Kicking things off with a bang. We've got John John Florence, the current Jeep ratings leader. I'm stoked to be in the yellow Jeep leader jersey. Yeah, it gives you a lot of confidence and definitely lets you know that you're kind of doing the right things. Sets it up, getting a, a lot of whip and some different variation off the top. I'm super excited with where I'm at right now. It was nice to have a break last year and kind of sit back and think about everything and come back with like a fresh look on it. These snaps and the drive through that turn is just beautiful. John is just looking on point.
It's been a pretty incredible comeback story for John John Florence after the, the worst injury, one of the worst injuries of his career to sideline him for the majority of last season to come back to already be world number one in a short period of time. This is just stop four. And now absolutely dominating main break once again, 9-2-3 and 8-5. And Italo is ripping as well, 8-0-3 and a 7-3-3. I'd like to give this heat a few more hours just to see them <laughs> battle it out from the end. Yeah, yeah. Joe Trapel with Potts and also 2012 world champ Joel Parkinson with a pleasant surprise. Joel, let's go back to the 2017 year for John. I mean, there's been a lot said about the performance that he threw down on the main break that year. Uh, the, the whole idea was how he changed the entire approach on this wave. And it, it, it was common back then for a lot of the touring professionals to say, you know what, main break's not always their favorite wave on tour. But something changed when John showed up that year with everyone's take on this wave, as that was a big attempt that just went down during the break. What was your takeaway of how John performed, performed uh, that year? Yeah, um, I, for me, it was the, one of the best performances because of, it was the it was the five heats in a row, mm. uh, all above seventeen and a half. I think his, that was his lowest, right? It was seventeen and a half, which is basically, you know, two huge scores. But he went on and put nineteens up, eighteens up. I mean, it wasn't just a dominating one or two performances. It was a concession of never even getting close to anyone. And no, but nobody got close to beating him that yeah. event. Comboed and everyone. He comboed the whole field literally with from round one I think he threw a big score out but mm -hmm. from then on round two he just went next level and to me that was just dominating I mean he can do that in other places but that one was just so far he was levels above everyone else and you know that's I personally think that's where his confidence was huge after that event pretty impressive especially on a wave uh, where you're looking at performances that were hard to compare to what he threw down there's been a lot of incredible surfing on this venue but there was something else happening with maybe that surfboard design that he rode, the way he was attacking with his carves. Obviously, he was on a hot streak, but it almost redefined how you perform on this wave. Definitely, definitely. It, uh, I think the judging, you know, from there on out, the, here we go, Italo. Italo looking for a big rodeo. Wow. Almost Jeez. got the ground. His actual board, he, he missed the grab a little, but his board actually landed right where it needed to be. <laughs> um, I'm surprised he just didn't find it find it somehow, uh, like body surf to it or do something crazy. <laughs> That's the kind of guy he is, right? Yeah. Yeah, you just never know with this guy. But let's have a look here. Kind of missed the grab. Just missing the grab, and there's the board under his feet. Kind of Man. a dangerous maneuver, though, but... I don't know if he has to go for that at this point. Yeah. I mean, there's still quite a few sets probably left in this heat, and he, he probably could have tagged that wave to match one of John's scores at least and put himself in position to, you know, go for glory on the last wave. I like the fact, though, he's looking for a 9.7, and he's just thinking to himself, let's just, uh, you know, go for the Hail Mary. Uh, yeah, but he still could do it two waves, right? True. So a couple of different game plans there. Ferreira trying the rodeo, missing the grab. Now he doesn't have priority which sometimes helps his cause because he'll start roaming through these inside sections. Itolo starting to wind up. Another opportunity to maybe hit the lip, but he'll get hung up. Still searching, and now he's out. So it's kind of clear. Last two waves, he's hunting down he's a huge there. ramp. He's he is. For something special. Yeah. I noticed, too, with Italo right now, he's got his ankle brace back on. Um, there's been surfs. He has used it, and he hasn't used it. Yesterday, I don't think he had it on at the box, did he? Didn't see it. No, he didn't have it on again, and, and now it's back on. I'm not sure whether it's through backside turns, or maybe it's the, the bump and the lump on this wave that, that kind of give him, you know, a bit of soreness. So we'll see how he's going to approach this next opportunity. 7.30 to go. I know, Strider, you are loving this matchup, Florence with an eight and a nine. I mean, Italo's behind him with a seven and an eight. Uh, incredible world title heat right now. Yeah, 100%. I, you know, these guys are going to be there at the end. We're going to watch these guys battle it out for sure, 100%. And I kind of want to just put it back into Parco's court and ask him, where, who's the Australian that's going to be in this at the end of the year? Because at the moment, for the first time in a long time, I barely even see one in the top 10. And I think it's uh, it's kind of a scratch of the head. What'd you do with the, the wind in the Australian sail when you left? <laughs> <laughs> well, why well, am I getting the blame for that? <laughs> Seriously. But no, honestly, good question, Strider. I, it's, I know I was chatting him the other day about it. Do you it. feel bad now? I mean, it's your responsibility. Yeah, well, do man, it's, uh, it was definitely the first time in a long time that we've gone out of an Australian leg after Bells with 
Ryan Callahan at ninth was our highest placed Australian, and it's uh, you know I definitely feel like there's a rut right there, but uh, hopefully you know Julian surfed really well, and hopefully he's he's back out there swinging again, and you know he's got a lot of throwaways to get through, and you know he needs to put a perfect year together if he really wants a shot at a title right now. Well, it's a great topic, thank you, Strider, and Joel thinking about sort of the role that. You your, your, and Mick had on tour and, you know, Taj before, kind of the elder statements that a lot of competitors would actually go to. And I think I saw you specifically, especially in your last couple of years, and Mick as well, had so much time to give back, especially to the Australians that were coming up, because you wanted to give them all the, the tools that they could have to, to really do well on this tour. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I guess that's kind of your job as you're an elder statesman uh, left on tour. Uh, is to, I guess, lay an easier path for, for your next generation behind you in your country. So, you know, I'm, as much as I'm a fan of my Australian friends and I want them to do well, I'm just a fan of surfing too. So uh, it's a bummer we don't have a, uh, an Australian right here at the top right now in a yellow jersey, but hopefully the boys really pull their fingers out and, and do it. We're looking at the five-minute warning. Florence putting on an incredible performance over Italo Ferreira. Italo with priority with an 8 and a 7-3-3. And another big heat to come up after this with Kyle Ibelli taking on Jordy Smith. Followed by Seth Moniz, Kolohe and Dino. And then the all-Australian matchup, Julian Wilson, Ryan Callanan. Callanan higher seed at the moment than Julian, but Wilson feels like he's just finding his rhythm. And he'll be dangerous in that fourth quarter final. Obviously coming off a crazy year where he finished runner-up in the world. And... Parka, you got uh, your last heat of your career and happened to be with Julian at Pipeline in crazy conditions. And I know really how much that meant to you to walk away in style. Yeah, definitely. I'm, uh, I'm so happy that I'm not there at the moment in New Jersey. <laughs> I've, I've been enjoying, enjoying surfing so much. So we're going to go to a recap here and I have to listen to my retirement party. <laughs> <laughs> Going through a classic heat. I love it. You got us all switched on when you called it the world oh. title heat with number one and three in the world. Going blow for blow. John out of the gates. Turned in an 8.5. Yeah, I mean, just from the get-go, it looks so confident, so comfortable. And as you said, he is back with an absolute vengeance. But I think this, I thought this heat was going to be a little closer than what it is. Italo Ferreira started well and kind of just lost a little bit of momentum. But surfing, incredible, you know, nonetheless, big, huge backside snaps. But this wave, Joel, this is the one. This is the one. I mean, is this going to give him the confidence to go on the roll like he did last time? And turns like that, and every turn was so different. So much variety and so clean and crisp. Wow, amazing stuff. Love and seeing that form from both these athletes as we check out the final series. Top end of the quarterfinals you're watching now. Italo versus John. John with the lead. Kaiwa Belli and Jordi up next. That's a rematch of a Bells final. And also looking at a younger heat with Seth Moniz, a rookie on tour, taking on Kolohe and Dino. They had a, a classic heat on the Gold Coast where Kolohe went on to the final. Julian, Ryan Callanan, they had a final last year in France. So a lot of good history looking at the final eight here at the Margaret River Pro. Yeah, that last heat's going to be a cracker. Julian looking really sharp. Uh, He's got a really good board under his feet. I mean, we watched him pick it up and walk down, uh, and I said, wow, how good does that board look? Uh, he went off in that last heat, so let's see what he's got against Ryan. I think if Ryan wins that heat, uh, isn't he already in the top 10, or he's going to be? I think he's probably there, because yeah. he was just outside of it, already guaranteed at least a fifth. He'll, he'll be right there, but he's got some room to move, for, that's for sure. Amazing to see in Ryan in the form that he's in. We're now 2.30 in this one. Italo with priority. I know, Joel, you share the same sponsor as Italo. You've seen him all the time at the end of the season in Hawaii. What's he like to hang out with? I mean, he's got a lot of energy, both <laughs> on land and the water. How fun is he to surf with as well? Yeah, he's really fun. He's funny to share a house with. He's, <laughs> so, he's just... He's just a ball of energy. Yeah. And I figured out why, because he literally has six cups of coffee a day. <laughs> he is, I'm like, bro, you got to drink some water too, you know, like you're, you're going to seize up, but he's, uh, he's so all time, man. He's such a, he's so happy all the time. He, uh, he he's like living with a minion. Like, <laughs> he just, you just like, you just giggle at him. So much fun to see him. Also, as he's uh, learned the English language since he qualified, his personality comes out. He is so fun to say hi to. Always has a quick laugh. Always has his uh, goals clear that he wants to be a world champion. So much passion and drive as he's 
Trying to figure out a game plan to come back. Florence is going to lock into this one. And just hop out quickly. Yeah, I mean, the, I think I think one of the funniest things uh, I've heard him say was um, his, his he didn't have any warm-ups, never surfed the box before. His warm-up was in the morning at 5 o'clock. He was on the bed with no fins in his board trying to work out how to grab the rail at the box. Yeah, that's crazy. That's insane. Unbelievable. Uh, what do they say? You think it, feel it, do it, right? Yeah. So I Imagine mean, it, and, and, you're, and you're halfway there. To but be that gifted to perform on your first strike at a wave like the box, that's special. Yeah, that wave, if that lip landed on him too, that was such a thick one, he would have just... He would have... It, it would have been dead. It would have been the ankle brace went on to be on that one time, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Oof. What a hero. Italo still needing a 9.7, 50 seconds. And John Florence can help his own call cause if he knocks him out here to get some room on the Jeep leaderboard. A comeback story that's been incredible. Obviously, the world title race is so intense. Uh, Joel, for yourself, being so fired up and switched on for so many years to finally clinch. I mean, the year after your world title, you actually did really well on tour, won Bali, third in the world. But what does that pressure valve release feel like? And I think maybe John got to go through it last year with the blessing in disguise of having an injury. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I was still just as hungry to win a world title the year after I won. I just, uh, I ended up third. I, they definitely, there's uh, a lot more pressure as being a world champ, you know. I hadn't had the target on me before. I was always chasing the target, and that was just a new, new feeling, a new position for me to be in. And um, it's probably a blessing. John, he's not the target; he's chasing it, you know. And coming back in such a fine way, nine, two, three, and an eight point five as Italo is out, and Florence puts on another brilliant performance here at the main break, moving on to the semifinals. Parco, do you like that? Well, if so. Subscribe over there and then watch more videos over there. And then tell us your favorite videos down there. It's a three-step process. Do them all now.